Welcome everybody to Ignite Humanity Live. I'm your host, Lady JB, and I am delighted to be here to share with you ways for us all, everyone on the planet, to ignite humanity. And it is my goal to come to you each and every day, Monday to Friday, and bring you powerful, exciting ideas and strategies on ways that each and every one of us can ignite humanity and share with you amazing guests that are around the globe doing amazing things that are also igniting humanity so that you feel inspired. We want you to awaken because today's Tuesday and it's all about awaken is our daily theme. We want you to awaken to ideas that you can do. Now, a lot of people feel like igniting humanity is a huge endeavor and we want to share that it's actually an incremental step that each and every one of us can do. We all have the power to ignite humanity. Just stepping outside of our door, saying hello, offering um, a service, uh, a support to somebody in need, we are igniting humanity. When we go to work every day and provide good service and great products and excellent customer relations, we are igniting humanity. When we come home at the end of the day and talk to our kids and spend time with our spouses, we are igniting humanity. And so this show is all about ways that you can ignite humanity that create a ripple effect around the globe. I want to talk a little bit about kids today. One of our guests is very much an advocate in the children's arena. And I want to share with you that our children have massive amounts of wisdom and deep sharing that can help ignite humanity. In fact, when we listen to our kids in their pure, in their innocence, in their honesty, they truly say things that ignite humanity. A few years ago, I was doing a speech on stage behind Marianne Williamson, one of the top motivational speakers on the planet, truly a woman uh, in the precedent of her field. And I was a little bit nervous about speaking after Marianne Williamson. I didn't know how to take you know, the speech after her. And I remember practicing at home what I was gonna say, and preparing my speech and my eight-year-old noticed how nervous I was and how diligent I was uh, working on my project and she said you know mom what's wrong and I said well I'm a little bit nervous about speaking behind Marianne Williamson will I be interesting enough and powerful enough will I make an impact on the crowd and my perfect wonderful little eight-year-old said mom you just got to believe in yourself and it was such a powerful experience that that little little person and her beauty just said, mom, you just got to believe in yourself. And it was so touching and endearing to my heart that I actually recorded it on my phone. I said, say that again. And I recorded it. And that night when I spoke on stage after Marianne Williamson, I told people this exact story. You just got to believe in yourself and you can hear it and feel it from the little people around us that are so wise and blessed and igniting humanity in their own way with their beautiful innocence and I took my phone and I played the recording on my microphone so the whole audience could hear it. And everyone heard my eight-year-old say, you just gotta believe in yourself. And I wanna share with you today, you just gotta believe in yourself, awaken to your powers. Just really awaken to your beauty, your magnificence, the uh, incredibleness that you are, the way you have been made like no other person on the planet and the way that you ignite humanity will be incredible in your own unique way. I just want you to, each and every one of you to know that you are incredible and you just got to believe in yourself. All right, without further ado, let's talk about our guest. Let's share with you the wonderful, uh, amazing woman we're bringing onto the show all the way from Brazil. As we have said many times before, we are global and we want to make sure that you hear the voices and the impact and the inspiration from people in all different areas of the world. And so we are so happy to have from Brazil a very good friend of mine, an Ignite author and someone who is truly making an impact. Hannah Morales has studied business and specialized in strategic planning and management development, as well as in leadership, group facilitation, culture and organizational change. She is a best-selling author, investor, mentor, and an entrepreneur in the educational field and travels the world fulfilling her mission to inspire and empower people so they can develop their potential and have freedom while respecting the diversity in the world. She also leads a nonprofit project that supports children to create a better future for themselves, their families, and the planet called Development Village. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, my good friend. Hello, Hannah. Hey, JV. Hey, everybody. It's a, such a pleasure to be here with you. Now, we should be saying it in Portuguese, right? <laughs> we can say that, yes. We can say, hola. Hola. Buen venido. Is that correct? Bem-vindos. Bem oh, say it again. Yes, of course, right? It's Baby. so much more. It has like a little more flair in Portuguese, right? That's true. <laughs> 
Now, I'll never forget, and this is a little segue, but when Hannah uh, went bestseller with her book, her family came onto a show that we did to celebrate her. There was about 40 people on the show, and instantly everyone started in speaking in Portuguese and celebrating and cheering and congratulating and tears and crying and blessings and and it was so beautiful and i don't speak portuguese but i got it like i totally got the message i could feel the celebration i could feel the love i could feel the connection and i just i started off with that story because everything about igniting humanity is about the power of connection you want to just go back to that moment a little bit and tell us what that felt like for you yes absolutely it was true happiness jb i have to you know to tell you that i felt truly loved connected with everybody and so supported by everybody around you know my family my friends they they were all there and it, it you know brought me back many uh, moments in my life where i had that love where i felt that love and i was totally totally connected to everybody and especially to myself so that is true happiness for me when i can you know reach that connection with others but also with myself it was you know, it was such a blast. I, I mean, I, I always remember that moment, and I'm glad you remember that too. Well, two things. One, it's what we call an ignite moment. We all refer to, we love to refer to those moments in life that are just so memorable and so impactful. We call them ignite moments. And the second thing you said really falls into the third principle of igniting humanity, which is instilled true happiness and inner peace. So let's dive into that. You know, a lot of people feel like true happiness is kind of a buzzword. It's kind of like a an out there-ness. It's not really something that we can obtain, but you and I both feel differently. True happiness is an inside job. You want to talk about that? Yeah, definitely. I guess I started realizing that, you know, when I was a, a little child, we were speaking about children, right? And although I'm not a mom, but I love children anyways. And I realized being a child that, my happiness was probably depending much more on me than anybody else, right? So I remember when I was 10 years old, for example, and uh, we were going to, we actually went to a theater, me and all my school friends. We went to this theater, we have a wonderful day, we watch a wonderful play. And once we were coming back from that theater, I've um, I sat in the bus at the back of the bus and my, you know, one of my best friends, she sat in the beginning of the bus close to the driver. And we have all of those 40 kids about that sitting in the bus, all excited after the theater. And suddenly I saw my best friend, she was leaving the chair in the very front of the bus, coming and walking, you know, towards the back of the bus. And as she was doing that, she was giving a little envelopes with every single to every single one of my friends. And in this envelope, there was a little card inside that says, you are invited to my birthday party. So her birthday party was coming up in a few days. And she's there, like, you know, very excited, inviting everybody. And she's walking the bus, delivering the invitations. And I'm there, back of the bus, just hearing, you know, every the rumors, everybody's talking about it. The rumors are coming from the front of, to the bus, you know, to the back of the bus. And you know, I get all these questions in my mind, you know, am I going to be allowed to go to this party? You know, my, my parents are going to allow me to go or which clothes I'm going to wear. I don't have any clothes or, you know, uh, would there be soft drinks? Would there be sweets? And all these things are in my mind and I'm starting to get very excited. And then finally, it gets to my time. Like my friend arrives in front of me after delivering the invitations to all of the others. And she looked at me and I look into her eyes waiting, you know, anxious, like nervous about that invitation. And she said, Hannah, I can't invite you. And I asked her, why not? And she told me, because you're poor. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I could not, I couldn't understand actually, fully understand what was going on, but I just felt this excruciating pain, you know? I never imagined that my social condition was impacting my friendships and my ability to be connected with other kids in the birthday party that everybody else was going but me. <laughs> so yeah. imagine as a kid, as a child, we actually, um, you know, probably she was repeating something that she heard from somebody else, from parents or other educators. Or I don't know, but I don't believe that kids naturally come with those prejudices, with that 
exclude exclusion mentality sort of thing. So I really believe that as a child, we already have a massive impact into each other. And that episode, actually, or that moment, right, it was one of the biggest Ignite moments in my life because with 10 years old, I realized, look, I don't want anybody, neither kids nor adults, anybody, absolutely anybody, no matter if you're poor or rich, if you were a woman and or a man, or if you were black or white, or if you were from Canada or I'm from Brazil, it doesn't matter. I don't want anybody ever to feel excluded. I wanted to include everybody. And inclusion for me was also a meaning of true happiness. When I felt included every time in my life, I felt truly happy. And, um, you know, that, that it was really touchy to me because as a child, as children, we can already impact each other's lives. So this is one of the reasons why I, you know, Oh, I get goosebumps. I get goosebumps from that story. Yeah. yeah. Well, a couple of things. I mean, one, it's such a great example of what we call an Ignite transformational, sorry, an Ignite impact moment. So something happened that was very impactful and often our Ignite impact moments happen when we are young. Many times an Ignite Impact moment actually impacts us so much that we do things in our lives a very specific way because of that impact moment. Now, often an Ignite Impact moment can be quite negative and actually cause us to withdraw or hold back or do things that we wouldn't normally do because we feel hindered by our Ignite Impact moment. I just want to say kudos to you because you took your Ignite Impact moment and you turned it into something good. You didn't necessarily let it diminish you or hold you back. You actually decided it was going to be the fuel to the fire that you needed to spark change and ignite something new in you. <laughs> Absolutely, JB. Because that's the thing, right? For me, it was like that no that that girl gave me in the bus. I've received so many other no's in my life. You know, I, I believe you too, right? All of us have, how many right, of us have heard a no or received a no from, you know, somebody else? All of us, I believe. And the power that we have in our hands is exactly that power of choosing what to do with that no. So do I want to turn that no into a win in my life? Right. So that's exactly what I did in that episode. Since then, you know, for the last 32 years, you know, I just completed 42 yesterday. So I was thinking, oh, my God, for this last 32 years, I've been, you know, doing this work to include people. So that friend 32 years ago did me a great favor. She was so important in my life to give me that no and showing me, right, Hannah, you have to choose what do you want to do with that? Right. And then so it's, I believe that everybody has this power of choosing what to do when the no's come into your direction. This is really important. And I want to stress for people to think about it for a moment. Imagine someone in your life who has said something or impacted you in a way that at what at the time that it happened, it actually felt painful or difficult. But as Hannah said, that person actually was a beautiful catalyst, was a beautiful um you know, co-creator in your life. They helped move you in a different direction that has now become your mission or your purpose or what you're most dedicated to. And Hannah, that is a fantastic example because I think every single one of us, and this is the power of storytelling, why we do the show and what I think will ignite humanity is true, authentic stories. As you were telling that story, I used to ride the bus to school also. And I was like, literally like back in the bus in my, in my school, like thinking about my life and a time when I felt ostracized on the bus or I felt excluded. And so that's the power of stories and how we layer them uh, 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 within each other and we can relate to each other even more. So beautiful, fast forward a little bit. Now you're doing things, you've had an Ignite transformation moment. So talk about that. Your impact moment was what pulled you forward. And now you've had what I love to call an Ignite transformation moment that has really propelled you into your mission and what you do to serve others. Mm -hmm. Yes, I guess um, like everybody's lives, you know, my life were made with those Ignite moments that to become that transformation about who I am today. And, you know, I, I feel I'm, I'm still transforming, right? I, I feel that I change every day because I learned new things every day. And um, talking about learning, 
another very impactful moment in my life was also when I, I was about 18, yeah, 17, 18 years old. I just joined university. I was so excited about, uh, you know, my new course. I had no idea what would happen. I would study business at, at the time and then, but I was totally, you know, a little bit lost actually, because I, I just had no clue what a university was about. And I'm just there now with all these people. And in the first day, the university decided to introduce the different institutions that they have inside. So the student movements, the junior enterprises, uh, all the other different organizations that were part of that college. And in one of those presentations, I was introduced to an organization called Isaac, and they are still today uh, the largest student run organization in the world. And I was, you know, with them uh, watching the presentation and suddenly they opened the world map in the wall and they said we are in all those places what we do is to develop young leaders so they can transform the world and we do that through exchange programs professional exchange programs where people can travel all over the world and they go back to their communities their countries to make a difference when i heard that jb i was totally hooked <laughs> ding 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 <laughs> You know, this is my place. I found my place. <laughs> like, I was so happy. And um, so I realized that, okay, how do I work with these guys? You know, what do I have to do to be part of it? So they explained to me they had a selection process coming up, and I have never participated in selection process in that way. And I went there to apply. So I went to the office. First requirement I saw, you must speak English. Mm -hmm. I didn't speak English when I was 18, JB. Really? <laughs> wow. And I was like, oh my God, no, you know, I can't believe it. the first requirement, like, oh, to participate of the process. But I was so determined to be part of it because I really felt that was my place. I, I really wanted to be there, you know, developing leaders, traveling the world, helping people to make an impact uh, in humanity. I was like, yeah, that's my place. I want to be there. And I went there, talked to the off to people in the office and said, look, I don't speak English yet. But I promise you, if I'm selected, you know, I'm going to be speaking English as fast as I can. I'm going to learn. I'm going to study. I'm going to listen to music in English. I'm going to translate stuff. I'm going to, you know, receive students uh, from foreign countries in my house to practice. I will do whatever it takes so I can learn as fast as I can. And then so I said this to them. They said, like, look, you know, you that's one of our requirements. You can apply and we'll see. After uh, a few weeks of selection process, right? Every step, you know, interviews, group dynamics and all of that. After every step, I was thinking like, oh, now they're gonna, you know, tell me that, oh no, you really need English. You really need English. You're not approved. Or, but at the same time, I have that hope. And my intention was so big. You know, I really wanna work with these guys. And I was telling them every step on the way, I really wanna work with you. I know I don't speak English, but I will. You know, I will learn, give me the chance, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, I was selected. I was the only one selected in the world that year that didn't speak English. And they trust me. They gave me a credit. They believed in me because I believed in myself too, right? So <laughs> I told them that I would do it. And that changed my life. The persistence, the grit, uh, but also the faith that I have in myself and the work that was possible to be done with their organization, with the opportunities and possibilities that they were presenting and the fact that I could be part of it, you know, I would never give up on that. No, I will be very persistent <laughs> as I went, you know, many years. I after. love that story. <laughs> I love that story. And I love the way you tied it into the beginning of the show about you got to believe in yourself. And when you believe in yourself, you inspire others to believe in you. And as the theme for the day is really about awaken, like you awoken to this new idea about being a part of that organization. And that sparked in you this idea that you were going to improve your life, change your life, guide yourself in a new direction so that that was going to be your mission. And, you know, obviously congratulations, because since that we have, I have witnessed you, I've seen you many uh, times over the years doing things that are following that mandate and really injecting this incredible leadership qualities in you, in others. And I just want to say bravo. Now, there may be some people at home watching who are like, I don't know, like she's lucky or, you know, that would never happen to me. Can you awaken some powerful ideas in them to think differently? Yeah, absolutely. 
you know, the world is full of biases, right? It's full of prejudices. And uh, we have so much inequality. I live in a country, uh, one of the most unequal countries in the planet. You know, the rich are very rich, the poor are very poor. That was the first inequality that I faced in my life, as I told in the story. But um, also, being a woman, <laughs> you know, it doesn't help in some societies. Not every country in the planet is already with the mentality that humans are humans and we all the same and we all we equal. We know majority of the countries in this planet are still battling, fighting against those biases, those prejudices. And um, not only and in some places, like if you are a uh, woman, black, if you come from a poor background, it is even harder for you. And when I think about luck, you know, luck is a magical word for me because I do think it's it is something that it is out there, but it's also about how do I embrace that luck? When I see an opportunity, when something comes, a possibility comes on my way, do I grab that? Or am I analyzing and complaining about it and analyzing, judging and saying, oh, no, that's not perfect. That's not exactly what I want. That's not. So in my case, I don't think twice. If an opportunity comes and I feel it, that is for me, I'll grab it. I'll grab it and develop that. Maybe it's not the perfect thing yet, but I'll make it happen, right? So for me, it's about grabbing those opportunities, understanding that, yes, some if it, that awakening that you mentioned, JB, for me, is a feeling. It's something that, okay, that sounds that, you know, it feels that this is for me. Let me try it. Let me go. Let me grab it and let me do it. Yeah, and the feeling is so important. I think a lot of people, and I even had this experience last night, sharing an opportunity with a new author, and they felt it, they wanted it, but then the brain got in the way and, oh, it takes a lot of time and I'm not sure if I'm ready and, you know, it's going to cost money. And I kept saying, well, what does it feel like? What is the feeling that you have? Well, I feel like I should do it and I feel like it's a yes and I feel like I'm ready. But then I keep thinking like maybe, and I was like, wow. And this really to your point, how we feel, like trust that feeling, awaken to that feeling, let that feeling be the guide because all the practical stuff is actually just constructs that we put in our mind. And so you are absolute example of follow that feeling and awaken to it. Tell us a little bit about your uh, your initiative and the ways that you are igniting others. I'd love to hear a little bit about what you're doing because it might inspire somebody else to go ahead and try and do the same. All right. So you mentioned a little bit in terms of my project that I have with Bellman Village with the children in the city where I live. And it's a, it's a foundation where we provide um, complementary education, different workshops and different trainings that they wouldn't have in school, but also bringing them skills that they need to develop to change their future, not only their future, uh, you know, themselves, for themselves, but also for the families and for the entire community where they are. And this project is for um, children around um, communities with, we call them the high-risk communities, right? So there are a lot of things that we shouldn't be exposing our kids to it, but it is there. It's just the reality. It's what it is. And then now, how do we actually uh, give opportunities to these kids to see, okay, there is a different life than this one that I see every day in the streets. There's a different life for me. Am I going to choose this or that? You know, so uh, showing these opportunities and the possibilities, this is one of the works that we're doing. And uh, besides of that, uh, most of my time, I'm also training leaders, right? So I started back then. Uh, when I was 18, developing young leaders, and now I develop e leaders of all ages. So I'm a global trainer for leadership and cultural transformation for different organizations and also uh, for people like in different open programs. This is a little bit more of what I do. I really believe in the power of leadership. If we choose that, right, the, the path of leadership, taking responsibility for what's going on, we can definitely collectively as human beings solve the major issues that we have, whether it's climate change or solving the inequalities that we have in the world, having better distribution around for everybody else and having better lives for all, all humanity. So. Mm. And we actually had a guest on the show a couple of days ago who said, you know, just leading your dog, leading your kids to school, you know, leading uh, a crosswalk like you are a leader, no matter what you do, you are a leader. And I love that you speak about being in leadership because we all actually are leaders in our own lives, in our families, and we all can be a leaders to make a huge impact. 
I know that we could talk so much about this and I'm so inspired by what you do. And I love the way you tell your story because as you share your story, you invite people to know more about you and you invite people in and you allow them to feel like if Hannah can do it, I can do it. So, so beautiful. We're going to put up on the screen where people can find you and know more about you. Any final words you'd like to share? Um, I'd love to share with everybody about, you know, have grit, have persistence. We know the world is not easy uh, from in many aspects and especially depending where you are, where you come from, your background. But have grit. Try to find mentors. And sometimes the mentors are not going to be available for you for just for free, right? But if you see somebody, some, sometimes as an older cousin, as an uncle, as a teacher, as somebody that you saw on TV, Make sure that you, if you have that figure, once you find somebody that inspires you and it's a, it can be that mentor to you, even if it is informally, watch what that person does, the good examples that brings to you, the different opportunities that came up into your life, you know, and persist to have that grit, that passion to build the life that you always dreamed of. And in this way, you're going to be not only changing your life, but also contributing to other people's changes. And um, that's the beauty of life. That, that will be my final words. Amen. Well, you are beautiful. Thank you so much. We will go forth today with grit and passion in our day. Yeah. Thanks, awesome. Hannah. Have a beautiful day. Thank you so much, JB. And thank you all for watching. Well, as you can see, they, we are all leaders, we have grit, and we can inspire each other. Hannah has a great way of telling her stories, and it has inspired me to tell you, if you would like to share your story and talk about what you're doing, your Ignite moment, your impact moment, your transformation moment, please tell us more about it at ignitehumanity.life. Share, and you could be a guest on the show. Additionally, if you'd like to write your story in one of our books, we'd love to direct you to our website because we are on our 20th compilation book. Over 700 authors have shared their powerful stories in our Ignite books, and we are always looking for more stories like yours. Go to ignitehumanity.life and see the many new books that we are writing. Uh, every single book has a theme, and we would love to include your story in one of ours. Now, if you want to know more about ways that you can ignite humanity, of course, you can go to our website and see what we're doing in igniting humanity all kinds of fun things and you can watch our show every single weekday uh, here on the network and of course go to our platform ignitehumanity.life backslash share sorry backslash watch and you can see all the episodes for free we make those free to you on purpose we want to allow you to have access to as much content as possible, just like Hannah shared, to lead you, to mentor you, to support you in igniting your life so that you can ignite others. And the truth is, when we ignite ourselves, we ignite the people around us. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will ignite humanity. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Now, more than ever, we need to come together to connect with one another. We need to feel the truth in who we are and let go of everything that's happened in the past. We need to empower every person on the planet and awaken hearts, enliven souls, come together, laugh, play, rejoice, connect, create, and love. It's time to ignite humanity. We want you to be a part of something that will impact the future for everyone. We want you to tell your story, share your Ignite moment, show people who you truly are. Be a part of igniting humanity and making a difference in the world and all of our futures.